This test is taking place in Cork, Ireland. Lieutenant Clodagh McConnell is an explosives ordnance disposal expert. The crack tow can be used very effectively underwater. Underwater, it's been used penetrating one inch steel up to 50 meters, and it's proved to be very effective. At this training pool, Navy divers practice placing Krakatoa underwater, attaching it with a magnet to a sheet of steel representing the hull of a warship. The Krakatoa is very simple to use. When the diver applies it to the device, they just go up and place it, and basically one, one device, place, explode, and that's it. Sidney Alford invented the Krakatoa, but it was his son Roland who helped ensure that the device worked as well underwater as it does on land. The biggest mechanical challenge was designing a seal that would work reliably. So what we had to do was to streamline it, make it as, as small as possible, but still efficient. Come up with, with that and then actually play around with different types of seals and, and, and make sure that you can actually screw it down um, without special tools and keep all the water out. Now I'm about to see just how devastating the Krakatoa can be. Below the waterline, unseen, undetected, one man now has the capability of delivering a very bad day to any warship. We've dropped a steel plate into the ocean to represent the hull of a ship. Lieutenant McConnell has loaded the weapon and gives it to the divers to attach to the target. Once it's placed, they need to get out of there, and fast. Really, you don't want to be in the water anywhere near this, within even half a mile of this, because if an explosion went off, it's just going to start collapsing all, all the, the hollow areas of your body. Your eardrums are going to burst. That's, that's the, 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 the first thing. Lung damage. Um, you know, sort of, it's going to be a real mess. That's the safety fuse lit. Watch out, because Krakatoa is about to blow. And there it goes. Because of the tamping effect of the water, the bang isn't as loud as it would have been on land. But it looks like it's worked. It's created such destruction, there's a problem recovering the steel target. And that's exactly what a frogman wants. A ship to sink right to the bottom. They've got zero visibility down here, so we're never going to find that piece of steel. But uh, if they did, or if a, a trawler ever pulls it up, they're going to find a nice big hole in that piece of steel. It's a perfect stealth weapon. Like the volcano it's named after, the Krakatoa delivers a big bang. Whether it's in the water or above the ground. Coming up, I get an exclusive trip on the Navy's newest stealth sub. Fire, tube six. Missile away, tube six. There's something dangerous and silent in the water. It's gigantic. It's powerful. It's deadly. And it can creep within a stone's throw of this location. I'm talking about the USS Texas a Virginia-class nuclear attack submarine that is really two powerful subs rolled into one. It can perform operations in deep waters and run covert combat missions at shallow depths. It's one and a half times the length of a 747 and weighs 7,800 tons. Yet, it can patrol in just a few fathoms of water. Despite its size, it goes undetected. For enemy sonar, there's nothing but a hole in the water. This is the ultimate underwater stealth vessel. As a former Navy SEAL, it's a privilege to head to Norfolk, Virginia, home of the largest naval base on Earth, to rendezvous with this amazing high-tech submarine. It's the newest, most advanced nuclear submarine on the planet. And we've been given exclusive access on its commissioning voyage. Pay attention. This is going to be cool.
As we set sail, I meet up with Chief of the Boat, Mark Brooks. When you think about trying to get a crew ready to go to combat, what are some of the things you're most concerned with as the, the Chief of the Boat? We can do everything on board now, so that makes it makes me feel better where I can have a, a look to see how everybody's training, where I don't have different guys at this trainer, this trainer, standard all over the naval base. We can do everything on board here, and that's a plus. I'll see just how effective their training is later, when the USS Texas receives a mission to attack. Well, we're about to head below. Submariners aboard the USS Texas can do this up to three months underwater. Prepare to dive. Very well, Paul Pilot. Passing 095 to the left, sir, 10 degrees water course. Very well, Paul Pilot. The Texas isn't just stealthy. It also boasts some of the smartest digital technology in the world. Very well, pilot. Walking into the control room is like walking onto the set of a sci-fi movie. Pilot, make it up two five zero feet. Use three zero degree up angle. That's the five one is vanished. Captain Litherland is her commanding officer. A submariner for over 25 years, the computer technology on board makes it easier for him to monitor what's happening above and beneath the waves. There are over 70 screens in this control room, each displaying different pieces of important information. And uh, that wealth of information is a tremendous asset to a commander as he tries to uh, figure out what's going on in the world around him, how best to employ the ship to uh, carry out its mission. No up periscope here. This is the world's first submarine without a traditional retractable periscope that relies on mirrors and glass. Instead, it's a photonic fiber optic mask that can beam color and infrared images onto any of the sub screens. Controlled by a joystick, the operator can quickly get a 360 degree view. Pilot, the uh, number one scope will actually remain raised for mission critical camera operations. All, uh, it's important to remember that the USS Texas isn't just super smart. It's also armed and dangerous. It's a multi-role submarine capable of devastating sea and land attacks with 16 Tomahawk missiles. Lieutenant Jonathan Wright knows the payload as well as anyone. Tell me about the weapons on board the USS Texas. Okay, one of the great things about the uh, Texas or the Virginia class submarine itself is we can carry a variety of different weapons on board. Uh, we are configured right now, you can see around the room here, it's a very open space. We can hold up to 24 weapons in uh, the cradles. For short range attacks on other ships, it's equipped with Mark 48 torpedoes. A Mark 48 can reach a target over five miles away, but the most impressive thing is its guidance system. As it leaves the launch tube, a thin wire spins out, physically linking the sub to the torpedo. As the torpedo seeks its prey, it's in constant contact with fire control back on the sub, feeding valuable intel through its guiding wire. If the sub is required to strike at long-range targets, the Texas is packed with land attack Tomahawk cruise missiles they're capable of reaching a target that's almost a thousand miles away. The Tomahawk is essentially a fire and forget weapon. And its range means that Texas is capable of attacking 75% of the world's land mass. Walking around the sub, it's easy to forget how fast things can change for the crew. When the Texas changes depth, everyone knows about it. Pressure high. 15 down, 450 feet. Here we're heading up, 30 degrees. As you can see with my feet, it's dug into the tiniest piece of metal that's up. <laughs> I'm gonna lose the foot if it doesn't stay locked. 30 degrees, straight up. <laughs> 15 down, 500 feet. Coming back up, probably around 25, 20, <laughs> 10, uh, probably about five right here. And we 
are just starting to level back out. But whether performing deep or shallow water missions, the submarine still needs to be stealthy. Even traveling at 25 knots, the Texas is quieter than most subs going at just five. How? By adding a few stealthy measures, like rubber shock absorbers under the floors and an exterior rubber coating to reduce sonic noise. And it's this stealth that makes the sub an ideal platform for special operations. One area that we particularly emphasized with this class of submarine is support of special warfare forces. Being able to put Navy SEALs and Marines out of the sub close to the shoreline is what gives the Texas its edge when it comes to combat missions in shallow water. Here we have a uh, capability that's uh, uh, been optimized through the inclusion of a nine-man lockout chamber, uh, which allows us to uh, take special forces, SEALs, Rangers, uh, put them out of the ship and recover them covertly close into the coast where we expect to operate. Uh, we also have the ability to embark uh, uh, dry deck shelters. When I was a Navy SEAL, locking out of an emergency escape trunk was a real challenge. In old trunk spaces, you'd be lucky if you could fit two guys and maybe a small rolled up rubber boat. With this trunk space, you can fit up to 12 SEALs in here. Behind these walls, it's classified, but there's enough space that 12 guys can be lined up ready to go outside of this escape trunk and do operations on land. Fire. Coming up, it's battle stations as I join a live exercise aboard the USS Texas. Is it as stealthy as it claims? Fire. Fire. 